Huh? Are you ready for a strange story? Yeah, yeah why not? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so let's turn the lessons over to the back side and read some scripture right quick. Okay. Who would like to read, I guess? I will. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else want to read? Somebody should read. I don't know who. What? Somebody should read. I will. Well, Adam will read. Okay. Well, Adam. Okay. Well, Adam, you can just read both of them. Peter, 1 Peter, and Revelations. All right. Shall we stand? Honor Those the that would like to honor the word of God, please stand. <coughs> First Peter five. Uh, 7 through 9, casting all the care upon them, for, the for you, be sober, be vigilant, vi 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 yeah, that word, I know what it says, I just can't say it, because your adversary, adversary the devil has, has a uh, roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour, yep. whom resist steadfast the faith, knowing the same affections and the, and the uh, accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Revelations 12, 11, King James Version that says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and the word was the testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Let's go over the scripture right quick. If that, no one knows. It says, cast all your care about him because he cares for you. That is one of the most important things. We talked about the future. There are things out there that if we knew about it, it would scare us. But Yep. And you, and you know, but God wants to bring us through these things. And he wants to, I mean, a lot of you said the word of God was what? That um, uh, just now that God was going to take care of you? Yeah. Yeah. And didn't you? Wasn't that a lot when we were saying that? Wasn't that what you said? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that is true. That is what God, God cares for you. And he wants you to know that he loves you. And he wants to see you through it. Cast all your care upon him. You know what our biggest problem is? We yeah. keep it for ourselves. For ourselves, yeah. We care. We we cast all our cares upon ourselves. Oh dear, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I tell you what, I can't. I can't do anything about it. You know. Yeah. But God can, can he? And you can't do anything about it either but God can. Cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you. It's our relationship with God that is very, 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 very important. Is it important? Mm -hmm. Very, very, right? Mm -hmm. uh, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Did you know that? Yeah. The devil is always looking for opportunities to come into your life to do havoc. <clears throat> Actually, John 10.10. 10. God has a plan for your life, and God's plan for you is life and life more abundantly. But John 10 says the devil's plan. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is always seeking to do those three things in your life. Some way, somehow, he's trying to do that in a lot of different ways. But he wants to still kill and destroy. Does anybody know why? Because he doesn't like us. His time is short. His time is short. And his he, time is short. That's true. That's and, true. I didn't think of that. Yes? I think he just hates what God created. God created mankind. I think he hated that. Right. He hates man. You don't have to believe this. This is extra biblical. But this is definitely something I believe. Is that in heaven, 
um, say, uh, Satan was there as God was beginning to reveal to the angels what his plan was. And God revealed to the angels, he says, I'm going to create man. He's a little bit smaller than you. He will not have the powers you have. But I'm creating man, and you're going to have to bow down and worship man. What do you think the devil said? He didn't like that. I'm oh, no. I'm on it. <laughs> he says, yeah, that was it. That's where they believe most rabbis, that's where they believe that he revoked. And I do too. I believe that's where he revoked. He said, I'm not going to go along with that plan. Mm. And so a third of the angels came with uh, Lucifer. How many angels does <coughs> an, uh, Lucifer have? Uh, no, 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 not quite at all. Because God is a God that creates, and he's still been creating angels, even though we don't see them. So he's increased his number. His two-thirds is now bigger than that. Oh. So, <laughs> you, that's good so you believe in reincarnation? What? Oh, no, 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 no. I believe in creation. God creates. Brand new. God creates. No, not reincarnation. Because you're unique. Will anybody else be like you? No. No. Hmm. No. I hope when not. we go to heaven, God has a special plan for us. And we will be rewarded according to what we have done or what we have not done. Hmm. All right. Who resists, uh, but you're, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he, he, he's out there. Like a roaring lion is what it won't, he says here. You need to see that. Like a roaring lion. He is constantly looking for ways to get at you. What do lions do? They go through the, through the, uh, the different um, the antelopes and the um, different uh, animals come by. And they, what do they do? They look for the weak one. Yep. And they take the weak one out. Mm -hmm. All right. And so the, dev the devil's always looking for weakness. And that's why it's important for you to read your Bible every day. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Yep. Yeah. It's true, though, Adam. I know. All right. Because that, if, if you're having trouble, then that's one of the first things to do. Or uh, the other thing is to praise God. Your keyboard. Uh-huh. Praise God. That, um, Idea. Are you going to be playing the keyboard? Okay, great. I'm glad, glad, glad to hear that. Good thing the number was able to sell that thing. Praise the number on the finals. Yes, right. yes. He almost did. Uh, you prophesied on it. Just about did. Um, oh, you didn't sell? No. Oh, Whom resist steadfast in the faith, know that the same reflections are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Everybody goes through problems. Did you know that? Yeah. You think your problems are worse than everybody else? No. Yeah. There's a saying that, you know, if, if you want to trade places with somebody, troubles with somebody else, you probably take your own back. <laughs> Something like that. I had never heard that, but that's a good thing. What? My mother said to me that her mother always used to say, we all sat around the table, around the table, and we all wanted to give our problem to somebody else. We would probably take our own back because we're not as bad as somebody else's. Right. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good comment. All right. The main thing is we should never compare our problems with other people. Right. You know, whatever you're going through, God's going to be with you. All right. Revelation 12:11. And they overcame. What's overcame? Overcome. To win a victory? Defeated. To defeat, Not yeah. Not to be defeated, right. Be defeated. Yeah. You, you overcome. You are victorious. You are coming through this with flying colors. They overcame him. All right. You ready for the three things? Three things. If you want to overcome the devil, there's three things you can do here. All right, ready? Number one, 
by the blood of the Lamb. You always <laughs> focus on the blood of Jesus Christ. Number two, the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. What you say is very important. Oh, I'm worthless. I'm never going to amount to anything. What's the word of your testimony? What I just said is defeat, isn't it? I do that. Has anybody in this room ever said defeat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we need to we need to break that cycle, don't we? Yeah, I yeah, had this bad cycle, Pastor Ivy, where I always cut down myself <laughs> a lot. Yes, and that <laughs> that is giving the devil an opportunity to get actually. Okay, <laughs> and the third thing, they did not love their lives unto death. You're not concerned about whether you're going to die or live. You're concerned about what you do for Jesus Christ. That's what you, get. you got it? Only the things that are done for Christ will Only the things that are done for Christ will last. How true. True, true, true. Okay. Let's see if I can get this right. All right. I got a story for you, and I got to read it to you. Oh, that's not the right page. Oh, there it is. All right. Okay, this is a story from Michigan back in 1919. How many of you were alive in 1919? I was. Yeah. 1919? I don't even think the oldest person in this room was. No. My great-grandmother was born in 1919. My great-grandmother was around then. Okay. She was right. born 18. My mother was born then, but she was, she was not. I mean, she was born. She Definitely couldn't have been involved in anything. Um, but uh, the guy that wrote this book talked about his grandfather. Uh, his grandfather had immigrated to America from Germany uh, 11 years earlier, so that would be 1908. <coughs> and he settled in the city of Pigeon, Michigan, where he pastored a German church that had grown from small meetings in his rural homes. Growing up, I often read the story of Mathis, heard the story, not read, heard the story of Mathis Maga, whose testimony had left an indelible impression on the minds of all who knew him. His wife was a faithful member of my grandfather's congregation, but darkness lived inside the heart of Mathis that set him at odds with God in the church, which he hated passionately. Which he hated passionately. God doesn't want us to have any hatred, especially for other Christians. Especially for any ministers. Especially for other churches. God doesn't want us to have hatred. Does he? I don't know. From time to time, a stranger would come over him a strange power would come over him and he would be driven to do bizarre things. He was known to throw himself down from the loft of the barn head first without any harm. Shalar, would that, would that harm you? Yes. Head first? You break your neck, you, it will harm you really bad, won't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Or your skull. Yeah. What? Or your skull. You know, yeah, that's true too. Okay, then he would do that. All right. How bad do you think it was? Pretty bad. It did be bad. No, without any harm. That was a demonic power over him that made him do bizarre things, mm. and he would not get hurt by it. Mm. That was supernatural. Oh, he didn't get hurt by it. He was like Superman then. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't compare it to that. It was apparently to everyone that demonic activity was at his, in his life. And many times the church leaders would warn him to no avail. My Uncle John said that he had told Mattis, the way you have chosen will lead to destruction. You are in danger of being possessed by the devil fully. Stop this and humble yourself before God so you can receive help. But he would not listen. One evening, after an argument in a fit of rage, Mattis gave himself over to the power that had been influenced in him for so long. All the events that 
to follow would be completely blotted from his memory as the demonic power possessed him completely. In other words, the demon would make him do things, but he wouldn't know that he did it. All right? He would, he would know and wouldn't know. know. He would not know. Oh. Mrs. Nagai, um, that's Ma um, Mattis' uh, wife, had gone to the city to shop, and when she returned at dust on her horse-drawn wagon, she could see the silhouette of her husband standing on the porch in the shadows, holding an axe in his hand. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, it is. It's really bad. Um, as she did closer, feeling the uneasiness came over her, something was not right. Her anxiety turned to terror when she saw that her husband was covered in blood and his eyes were hollow and empty. She immediately rode away to the house of my grandfather. Come quickly, she pleaded, and when Mattis saw my grandfather and the elders of the church approaching the house, he began to cry out in fear. He was mumbling cryptic praises about how he saw them as being covered in red and could not come near them. What is that? Jesus. Covered. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Oh. The blood of Jesus covers you. Uh. And demonic spirits will see the red, the uh. blood of Jesus over your, your uh. life. Even though you can't see it, right. the demons will see it. Does that mean they can't come near you? Uh, no, they cannot, not unless you give yourself over to them, which is what he did. Huh. And uh, he was mumbling about how he saw them as being covered in blood and could not come near them. And then in a moment, he ran away and disappeared into the forest. Together, Mrs. Nagai and the elders entered the house where they made the grisly discovery. Mattis had brutally murdered his mother and three children in cold blood. Oh. It's really bad. Yikes. The news of that grisly act spread like wildfire through the small farming community, which was gripped by terror. Farmers would accompany, uh, accompany their wives to the barn to milk the cows and would not go into fields to work for fear of the deranged demonic that lurked in the woods. Some time later, the police finally apprehended Mattis and took him to jail. But he was so violent and uncontrollable that they had to isolate him in a cell by himself. Inside the jail, he tore his clothes off and sat naked. He, silhouette, his, he silhouette, shouted terrible in his sleep and had to be prevented from killing himself. J judge determined that he was so thoroughly insane that he was not fit to stand trial. So he committed, he was committed to an insane asylum a hundred miles away in Pontiac, Michigan. Huh. The doctors uh, sent word, word to Mrs. Nagai that her husband was incurably sick and that his condition was worsening each day and he feared that her husband would, would soon die and said that she would should come immediately. It was a very trying time for the believers in my grandfather's church. When my uncle arrived at the memorial service, he was met by Mrs. Nagai who said, how sad is, is it that I have been robbed of my beloved children? The saddest of all is my husband has become the prey of Satan, and Satan is the victor. Mm. No, Sister Nagai, uh, as Uncle John said, Satan is not the victor. This, seem, this semen victory is only temporary. There is no doubt that Grandma, who loved the Savior, is now safe with him. The same applies to the little children that are in heaven. Huh. And concerning your husband, there is hope to wrestle him from the power of Satan through prayers and faith. That we will do in the name of Jesus. See, in the name of Jesus, you have power and victory. Don't ever hesitate to use the name of Jesus. The congregation shook themselves out of their despair. See, as long as you have despair, it's very hard for God to work in your life. Did you know that? God wants you to get rid of the despair. 
And sometimes you just have to make yourself get rid of it. All right. Uh, where was I? Uh, the, the congregation shook themselves out of the despair and set themselves to pray. My Uncle John later wrote, we all fell on our knees and prayed with fever to God, with faith, fever, fervor uh, to God that he might destroy all attempts of Satan, that even this tragedy would turn to triumph, and that he also might deliver the possessed one from the power of Satan. Heaven seemed to open up, his, open up for us. We were filled with a holy joy and with courage of faith so that the com we commanded the demonic spirits to disappear and to leave the possessed one in the name of Jesus. I remember very well how I was filled with the Holy Spirit, given assurance of faith, and I shouted to the praying believer, brothers and sisters, it is finished. God has listened to our prayers. We can proclaim by faith that the oppressed, that the possessed one is delivered. It was my Uncle John who went to visit Mattis in the asylum. Upon arrival, he was escorted to the office of the head physician, <coughs> Dr. Christian. Isn't that a, funny that that was the name? Mm -hmm. The doctor was silent for a while, and then he said, I do not understand this case. Three days ago, I wrote a letter to the wife of this man and explained to her According to our test, her husband was incurable sick and probably would not live much longer. Yesterday morning, a change came, took place, and it is so radical that his condition seems to be completely normal. Well, whatever it is, he said, it seems to, that a miracle has happened here. Isn't that good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Christian rang the bell for a guard who has escorted Uncle John to visit to the visiting room. After a few minutes, Mattis was up to him. When he saw Uncle John, he rushed, him, rushed up to him. Please tell me what has happened. See, he didn't remember it. Hmm. It was all demonic. He begged, I cannot believe what these people have told me. The previous day when Mattis had suddenly and instantly came to his senses. He had no recollection of all the events that had, had to transpire. As Uncle John told him the whole story, Matt, Mattis broke down and sobbed, overwhelmed with grief. He had loved his children, isn't that sad, very much, and had been especially close to his dear elderly mother. Oh Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, he cried. I am the worst man who, who is this. It is difficult to see how this story like this could have a happy ending, but God in his incredible mercy has a way of bringing trumpet out of the even the worst of tragedies. Remember that. God has a way to bring triumph out of the worst of tragedies. Mm. Mathis had been used by Satan as a tool of destruction. And he will live with the unimaginable pain of this knowledge for the rest of his life. But though the power, but through the power of prayer, Jesus broke the chains off of his mind, like the demonic guardian set this captive free. Through this miracle, this deliverance, something had changed in Matthew's spirit. He was a true child of God. Not only was he delivered of demonic possession but he was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. The doctors found this dramatic recovery so unbelievable that they were complete, compelled to keep him in the asylum for more than a year under careful observation. And before giving him a clean bill of health, he was released and lived the rest of his days with his family as a faithful follower of Jesus, a changed man. Mm. Uncle John recalls that more than 20 years later, when passing through Detroit, he was preaching in a particular trail, church, and the believers were asked to testify what the Lord had done in their life. A little elderly man stood up and said, if anyone has a reason to praise God, it's me. It was Mattis, now old and gray. 
He had lived many years with the grant of the past, but he was overflowed with thankfulness to the God who had showed him such incredible mercy. With streams tearing down his face, he began to quote Psalms 42 through 3. He brought me up out of the heart of bull pit, out of the mire of clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praises unto our God. And many shall see it, and fear shall trust in the Lord. Amen? Yes. Amen. 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 Does anybody have anything as we come to a close? Nope. You, no. like, you were like a legion, wasn't he? What? The yes, yeah. he sure was. It probably was very, very similar, wasn't it? Um, okay, we're going to come to a time of prayer. Um, and just to let you know that Bobby and I, I'm a little bit under the weather and I don't know why. I seem fine now, but at night I seem to get sick a little bit. I don't have I don't, want everybody, I don't want everybody to say I'm on top of the weather. <laughs> well, everything's reopened again, Pastor. What? Well, everything's reopened again, and, and everything's everything reopened again. I guess I guess the old the, the old devil will mess with me too. Yeah, okay. Okay. Has any mind? When mm. people get sick because the weather yeah. in New York go up and down. That's right. Right. Well, exactly. And I've always had sinuses and things like that. Yeah, so I, I got that. I got seasonal allergies. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Uh, but um, Bobby and I, because we want her to be well whenever we go to Robert Packer, I'm not Robert Packer, uh, John Hopkins in Mar Maryland or uh, Cleveland Clinic in Ohio or wherever we end up. I don't know. Bobby has to make that mind her. Um, and, uh, that depends on if you want to make your brother happy, huh? Uh, but anyway, so, uh, because if she goes down sick, then it has to be postponed. And so, um, you don't want that. And so we're going to be going slowly. I hope you all understand. Ah. Uh, what? I hear you. Okay. So I'm yawning. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going with the things of God because I'm not going to fear. I refuse to succumb to fear, but I'm going to try to be wise. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, Bob wants to lay hands on people, and I do too, but I'm going to just let Bob do it uh, for the next couple of weeks anyway, okay? Okay. <coughs> All right. Does uh, anybody want prayer? Come on up, Bob.